So welcome to this unit. Um, I will be discussing today with you the idea of Europe and how it's been shaped in interacting with ideas of nationalism. And I will be structuring this in three parts. First of all, I will be talking a little bit about ideas of Europe. And then I will be focusing on the relationship with nationalism. And in conclusion, the third unit will look at the interrelationship with far-right movements and nationalist movements today. So let me start with ideas of Europe. It was uh, not long ago that Cvetan Todorov noted that Europe, as we conceive it today, has its origins in the Enlightenment. And so it would not be an exaggeration to say that without Europe, uh, there would be no Enlightenment, and without the Enlightenment, there would be no Europe. So, of course, there have been ideas of Europe since antiquity, but it is really the Enlightenment which brought about the modern idea of Europe. What Europe means, where its boundaries are, and who is in it and who is out it, of course, has shifted since. But as any construct of an idea, it is based on exclusion and inclusion. Who is thought about as European and what is thought about as being Europe and what is not. So the boundary making is an essential part of the European project. The American historian Larry Wolf pointed out that at first it was Eastern Europe which was the other. In fact, during the Enlightenment period, the scholars of Enlightenment often thought of the East as being barbaric and wild. From Poland to Dalmatia, it was Europe's other. But of course, there are many other others, others which Europe defines itself against. For many centuries, it was the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire, which controlled, governed large parts of Europe, in particular in its southeast, was seen as a threat and then as a declining a decadent rule. So there were in fact, I would say, multiple ways in which the Ottoman rule was seen as the main other in Europe for centuries. In fact, beginning in the early modern period and lasting until the end of the Ottoman rule uh, after the First World War. So at first it was a threat, besieging Vienna and posing a threat to European rulers. Later it became the sick man of Europe the embodiment of a declining, decaying empire on which Europeans could project superiority. In the end, it also became the embodiment of the Orient, an important idea which was so well articulated and defined by Edward Said, uh, an American Palestinian scholar, who in his book Orientalism talks about how European colonial expansion very much rested on the idea that there was the other in the Orient, in a homogenous space beyond Europe, which Europe could govern, rule, and on which it projected many ideas of both barbarism and decadence. And in that, the Ottoman Empire is central. There is, of course, many in-betweens. The most prominent in-between is the Balkans. Bulgarian historian Maria Todorova has written about how the Balkans are a half Europe, not the Orient, but also not fully in. Also a place in which many of Europe's anxieties and thoughts about barbarism are projected. So as you can see, the idea of Europe is not just based on integration and inclusion, but also on boundary making, on exclusion. And next, we'll talk a little bit more about what this means for nationalism.